I was raised in Southern Baptist Church in South Alabama and then pretty much followed that trend once I moved here. So this is sort of the, the early days here, huh? Yes. Yeah. This is um, before everything went digital. This before is everything went digital. Yeah. This is what, this what remains. For most of her life, Tammy Cook has been a devoted member of her conservative evangelical church. She raised her daughter, Sarah, the same way. The church was a second home for me. Yeah. Um, no, for both of our children. Um, I think some of our, our worst teenage battles were, you do have to spend some time at home. What, was it a pretty conservative church? Uh, yes, very traditional Baptist, no drinking, no dancing, no gambling. And that meant Cook was also a devoted mm -hmm. member of the Republican Party, until Trump came along. She soon found herself at odds with her church community. My catalyst when I left was during the Kavanaugh hearings. Uh, there were just so many, it had nothing to do with guilt, innocence, and none of that. It had to do with the attack on women, the verbal attack by our president, and it was a trigger for a lot of women. And I was just in a really bad place, and I was driving to church one Sunday and just bawling, just bawling. And I'm thinking, if only there were a place that we could all get together and comfort each other. I'm driving to church wishing there were a place I could seek comfort. When Trump won his first election, many Democrats hoped that his character flaws would eventually turn away a lot of voters like Cook. Even a small drop in support could swing a state like Texas, where evangelicals make up a third of the voter base. But four years later, that hasn't happened. In 2016, Trump received 81% of the white evangelical vote. Today, that number remains virtually unchanged. Pastor Todd Wagner is the leader of Watermark, one of the biggest evangelical megachurches in Dallas. We know there is one Lord, one God, one Father over all and in all. And when we learn to walk with him and know him and love him, it changes our world. I think there are some Democrats who look at Trump's behavior and they think, ooh, we got a chance to peel off some votes, some evangelical votes. Put it this way, I think some of the evangelical votes that will peel off because they've seen some things they can't support, there's gonna be other evangelical jokes that probably jump in because they go, wow, he did what he said he was going to do. So I think it'll probably even out. This president, almost more well, than any president in my lifetime, has done what he said he's gonna do from a policy and a platform issue, certainly with his judicial nominees, uh, his right to life stances, and other things that he said he was going to do. I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you know he's pandering, right? Yes, well, by pandering, I think all, unfortunately, politicians, yeah. right, pander because they want votes. But I mean, he, he, you know, does this whole thing, clearing out protesters in front of the White House, and then stands in front of, front of a church holding the Bible like a prop. Yeah. I mean, you're not, you don't look at that and think, this is a man who really stands with the, the word of God. I mean, you, you know he doesn't really know what's so inside that say, book, right? I, I don't really care if a president walks across the street and holds up a Bible or takes an oath on a Bible. I want to see them governed by that Bible, okay? And have you seen that? Nobody does that perfectly. This president certainly hasn't. And I really understand the tension that I would say serious believers experience when they look at, okay, do I vote? I can't vote for this candidate because they have single issue disqualifiers. And then I vote for this candidate who's done some things, maybe in terms of governance that I can support, but the person is so troubling. But it sounds like as long as the Democrats are in support of abortion, there's no Republican, no matter what he does in his personal life, that might make you say, Okay, again, let's go back to that. I'm going to vote for when the Democrat. When it comes to the rule of a governor, it's less important than the government and the laws that he wants to put into place. So, for instance, God forbid that we would have a, a, a true racist um, in a position of control again in our country. Okay? But I would rather have a guy that individually has bigoted views, but he makes laws that lead to equity and justice for all than I would a guy that personally would never hold a slave, for instance, but then would say things like, well, who am I to tell other people whether or not they can hold slaves? And with all that said, worship is going to begin in just a few minutes. That mindset has left voters like Tammy Cook as outliers, at least for now. She's still looking for a new church community to join, one that shares her values. That is a very lonely feeling right now to be a... Christian in the United States and not agree with where we're headed politically. Mm -hmm. It's very isolating. But by and large, four years of Donald Trump, you don't feel like there's been a wave of people who are, who are joining you. Do I believe there are going to be those that say, no, I don't stand for that? You know, you hear a lot of, well, I don't like what he does, but yeah. um, 
you know full well they're going to vote for him again. Especially in the current environment that we're in, um, and usually around election times, you hear that all evangelicals are doing this. Voting for Trump. Yes, like um, voting for Trump, and not just voting for Trump, but acting like that's not even difficult to do. You know, there was this thing called the moral majority for a long time, that all they ever did is say character matters, character matters, character matters, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere in 2016, apparently character doesn't matter. Yeah. And I did tell people, I said, listen, you know, I understand why you feel like you have to vote for Trump, but if you act like that's not difficult or there's not a problem or an inconsistency there, that's gonna confuse the heck out of people. Well, and some people would call it hypocrisy. Absolutely. And so I think it's why so many folks are just like so frustrated with these people that should first and primarily be evangelicals who sometimes look like their first and primary calling is to be Republicans. Let's put it this way, if, if abortion is, a, is an issue that's a unique disqualifier for you, is there any behavior from a Republican candidate for office that would make you vote for the Democrat? Yeah, any Christian who doesn't say yes to that, and by the way, not necessarily vote for somebody else who does something evil, but to at least not vote for that person. A vote for righteousness is never a wasted vote. And I would tell all my friends who would go, I, I, I don't know if I could ever justify somebody voting for this candidate. I would say, hey, understand that there are a lot of people who might make that decision who are very troubled by it, but feel like their hands are tied. Man, you look at what's going on in our government right now, and I see people that are acting like children. I see a bunch of capriciousness, and I see oppression in the land. I see disunity, I see discord, and I would just tell you there's gotta be a better way. Right now there's two candidates from the two major parties, and the two-party system has become a problem in our country. And I want them to know that there are a lot of people that are just as troubled as they are with the options. I think the cynic in me says, you're just trying to clear the, the path for people to vote for the person they're gonna vote for yeah. anyway. You know, all of this sort of hand-wringing about Trump. I mean, Trump represents the opposite of the moral majority, right? He represents in so many ways, in his personal life and his behavior, so many of the opposite of the kind of values you espouse here. Anybody who knows me knows I'm not trying to give anybody a path except anything but righteousness, all right? And I want people to be thoughtful. Do you worry about Trump and just how divisive he is and how much of a complicating factor he is? in his politics, in his personal life, do you worry about Trump creating some space for some people who are believers? Uh, absolutely. And, but that's not just a political problem. Politics is downstream of culture. And culture is supposed to be downstream from the church. Our problem is not Congress. The problem is the dead, feckless, undiscipled, unbiblical American church that has not produced a citizenry that would long for something better than what we currently are seeing. All laws are moral judgments. The question isn't, should we legislate morality? The question is, whose morality should we legislate?